Naturalization is hopefully the last thing you'll ever have to do with the USCIS. Sure, there is technically a chance that you could be denaturalized in the future, but the statistical probability of that is very low, and I've never actually personally seen it happen. So for most people, becoming a citizen is the end of the road. And what we're gonna be talking about today is naturalization and the process in 2023. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Puyan Darian. I'm an immigration lawyer, and all I do is practice immigration law. If you're new to my channel, be sure to like and subscribe, and I put out weekly videos on topics just like these. So the first thing that you should know for the naturalization test is that you're gonna be receiving the 2008 version of the test. So when you go on the USCIS website, there will be study materials. Uh, and these materials will help you prepare for your naturalization interview. There are two versions of the materials. One of them is for the 2008 version of the naturalization test, and one of them is for the 2020 version of the test. For most people who are applying today, it's gonna be the 2008 version of the test. So when you get into the citizenship interview, the naturalization interview, what happens? Well, the first thing that happens is the officer will usually ask you to raise your right hand and swear or affirm that everything you're going to say is the truth. And then what happens after that is kind of case by case, depends on the officer, but this is generally the way it'll go. The officer will ask you for all of your original documents, if you've ever been convicted of a crime, you're gonna need an original certificate of disposition for that specific crime. It's not really the, this officer's job to determine whether that crime is gonna create immigration problems for you or not. It's just their job to verify the authenticity of the document and proceed with the interview. The next thing that'll often happen, and this is not always the case, but they will typically go through the N-400 application with you to make sure that you or your lawyer didn't make any mistakes or that you don't wanna make any corrections to your application. By the way, this would be a good time to make any corrections if you think there are any errors in your N-400 application. So I always recommend getting a copy of it from your lawyer before your interview so that you can review it, make sure there were no errors, and if there are, immediately tell the immigration officer they will make corrections. It's not gonna prejudice you if it was not an intentional lie. After you go through the application, typically, they'll begin to administer the test. It's a verbal test. They'll ask you 10 of the questions that they randomly choose from the 100 questions on the 2008 version study materials. And if you get six of them correct, six out of 10, you pass that part of the test. The officer will also ask you to write a sentence in English, and it's typically on like a tablet, like an iPad. Um, and then after you write that sentence, there's a couple things that could happen. The officer can go through additional evidence that you might have, especially if you're applying for citizenship based on the three-year provision because you're married to a U.S. citizen and not the five-year provision for everyone else. So if you're applying for citizenship based on the three-year provision, the officer might ask to review updated evidence from your spouse and you showing that you guys are still living together, still in a good faith marriage. And this is actually where the officer is most likely to issue a request for additional evidence from you. But let's say there's no problems with your evidence. At that point, the officer will typically give you a piece of paper that says something like, congratulations, you passed the test. And then later on in the letter, it'll say, but wait until we send you an additional notice telling you what the next steps might be. After you exit the interview, and because at this point, after they give you the letter, you leave, you go home, you're kind of left hanging, you don't know what to expect. There are a couple different things that could happen at this stage. Number one, you could get an interview appointment notice in a few months. That's great news. That's a swearing in ceremony. And you'll appear for the swearing in ceremony and it's really easy. 
just bring your green card and any other documents they ask you to bring. You hand your green card to the immigration officer. They'll swear you in. You just repeat after them. And you'll have to provide an updated form. They'll mail it to you. But after you're sworn in, they'll give you a certificate of citizenship. The certificate of naturalization, actually. And this is your absolute evidence of US citizenship. So a question a lot of people have is, when do I get the passport during this process? And the answer is USCIS doesn't give you a passport. You actually need to take your certificate of naturalization and go to a US postal office and apply for your passport with them. And they will actually take your certificate of naturalization during the process. Let's say you don't get an interview appointment notice and the case is just pending and pending and no steps are being taken. Well, that usually means that an investigation is taking place and you may be asked to provide additional documentation down the road. You may even be placed in removal proceedings if they find something really big that resulted in you being deportable from the United States. It's not super likely, but I've seen it happen enough times where I screen every one of my clients for that possibility. One note to mention about people who applied for the I-751 petition to remove conditions, which is still pending at the time they apply for naturalization. If you've watched my previous videos, you probably know that you don't need to wait for the I-751 to get approved before you can apply for citizenship. But we are seeing substantial delays right now in 2023 for people who have an I-751 pending when they go for their naturalization interview. There is a good chance that your naturalization is gonna get held up until the I-751 has been adjudicated. In the past, there have been times where the USCIS officer will adjudicate the I-751 and N-400 in a joint interview I see that happening less and less likely here in New York today, but hopefully that will continue in the future, which should speed up the naturalization process. If you have specific questions about the naturalization process or you want to apply for naturalization, you should call or contact my office. You could also schedule a consultation directly through my website. I assist people with this all the time. We'll go through the whole case from start to finish I'll screen you for any possible issues that could come up during the naturalization process to make sure that the outcome is as smooth as possible. Again, guys, I'm Puyandarian, immigration lawyer, putting out weekly videos, and I'll see you next week.